and we've broken it. Building on what we did in the previous episode with the Game of Life, this time we'll be building a better visualization of the historical state of the grid as a heat map. So the first thing I'm going to change is instead of hard coding the value of each cell as just an integer that's 0 or 1, I'll create a cell class that then has a current state and then with that class we can do other things like remember the historical state of that particular cell. So we will create a new class and I'll call it cell and in the constructor I'll give it a current state and that current state will be what we have here. So that's math.floor math.random random times two. So we have that and then instead of creating this digit down here, instead we will just create a new cell. New cell with the capital C. And are we missing any others? Yes, we are. Okay, I think that's it. So now anywhere we're using that digit, we're going to need to change it to update instead of use just the digit, we need to use current state. So down here, do we use it? Do, 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 do. So we're using it here. So this is current state. And bu -bu -bu -bu. So all of these are going to have to change. And down here, do, 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 do. this needs to change as well. So now hop into the browser and hopefully we have exactly what we started with. Hmm, that doesn't look right to me. So we've clearly done something wrong. So let's do some debugging, shall we? Okay. So I'll start by just console logging out cell. See what that gives us. So we have a current state, so that's all right, but then occasionally we're getting a zero. We can see these zeros. So where are these coming from? Hmm. Remove that. So it seems like we're kind of doing the right thing, except so here we go. We forgot to put a current state here back into the browser whoa okay well I mean this is cool but it's not what we want okay huh again let's go and log out cell and see if there is any weird things happening there it would appear not. Oh, hmm. are we rebuilding the grid every time? I think we might be. So we have this build grid. Where do we call that? Oh, we only call it once. Ooh. Oh. So I think the issue here is in our, the way that we're copying the array. So we have a multi-dimensional array, and so let's actually just bring it up so we can see it. So we have this grid.map thing, where we're looping through every array inside our large array, or we could think about that as looping through every row inside of our grid, and then creating a new array based on that. And that's what the spread operator is doing. The array is a different space in memory, but they're still pointing to the same objects. So that while we think we're operating on a copy of the grid, it's just a separate version of the grid that's pointing at the same cell objects. So when we update any one of those cell objects, we're mutating the previous version. So, hmm, not good. I'm trying to think what the best way of getting around this is. So my instinct is we should create a grid that's like the grid we had before, where we just have numbers in it. So we basically loop through all of our cell objects and pull out the current state and make that the cell in the copy. And then run through this for loop system thing using that and then repopulate the actual thing. So I think that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna change things up a little. 
So I'm going to say const current gen equals grid dot map. That gives us the array and then array dot map. Then that gives us a cell and then I want to return cell dot current state. So I'll just comment the next gen out for now. And then instead of looping through grid, we'll loop through current gen. Remove the current state there and then remove this. So we'll remove all the current states here as well. And then here, instead of assigning next gen, we'll just assign to grid. 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 So I think that is right. And then we want to return grid, not next gen. So basically, we're getting our grid in, which is the grid that has the cell object in it. And then we're creating this current gen grid which just has the values of the current generation. So it doesn't have the objects, it just has integers. We're looping through that and defining the rules based on, of, based on that. And then once we've done that, then with that we can update the actual grid and then return that. So I think that's right. So let's just look through the rest. So our render, we're doing that. Yep, I think all of that's good. So I'll just comment out that console log for now. Come back into the browser. So now we're back to where we started. So that's good. So now we can start doing some fun things with our cell and the way that we're rendering. So back up to our cell. I'm gonna have another property on our cell and I'll call it this.total. Starts off at zero. And I'll create a method that sets state. And we'll pass in a state and then this dot current state equals state and this dot total adds on state. So this total property is just going to be a counter that's going to count the accumulative score of a given cell over time. So every time a cell becomes alive, that total will increment. So we're going to have to use this set state every time that we're actually manually assigning current state, we should use set state instead. So I'll just do a search for current state. So here we can say set state to zero. Set state to zero. Set state, oh, set state to one. And we should also have the else case here as well. So before in the previous part, we didn't have the else case because the else case is just we're staying the same. But this time we want to be able to count an increment total if a cell stays alive, because that's another generation that that cell has been alive. So here I'll say grid column row dot set state grid column row. So it will just set the state to what it already is. And that will change nothing, but it will increment total if the cell stays alive. So now, if I console log out the cell, the visualization is going to be the same, but hopefully we should have a total now. And we don't. Oh, of course, because we're setting that. Silly us. We don't want to set the state to that. We want to set it to current state. So we'll come back and have a look. And there we go. So it's running really slowly, but that's probably because we're printing so many cells to the console. But we do have a total in our cell object. So that's all we need. So let's come back and remove this console log so that we don't kill our computer. And we'll quickly check that everything's still working. And it appears so. So now let's work on the way that we're visualizing. So my idea is instead of filling the cell based on the current state and just having black and white, I'm thinking of a heat map based on the total value. And that will be visualizing how often a cell has been alive over the whole course of history of this game of life. So let's give that a go. So we're gonna need HSL. So let's Google um, fill style 
HSL canvas. Okay, so we can just do that. That's good. So I'll say fill style equals that. And I'll space it out and comment out the previous line. So I'm just going to leave it like this for now, just to see that it works. So we go, whoa, okay, that's a bit much for me. Hmm. It works though. Okay, so let's remove this random stuff. And I'm also going to use template strings just because they're a bit nicer. And here, what do I want to put? So something that uses cell.total. So let's do... So this isn't what I want, but let's say cell.total and then modulus 360. Just to see what that does. Come back. And that's kind of a cool effect. I mean, this isn't what I was going for, but this is pretty cool. Huh. Nice. I mean, this is pretty interesting. But what we're, what we're going to need to do is to find out what the largest total value is and then normalize that and then scale everything to an HSL value based on that normalized figure. So I will probably have to do that. There's probably a more efficient way of doing this, but I'm just for now going to create the same for loop up here and we will create a max total equals zero if let's actually grab hold of this cell if cell dot total is greater than max total then max total equals cell dot total. So now we have the maximum value. So then we can divide. So let's do it out here. So we'll say normalized equals cell dot total divided by max total. So that should be a number between zero and one. And then we can say 360 times normalized and see what we've got. So that kind of looks very similar to our previous values. So the, I think the place I'm falling down here, so this looks inverted to me. It looks like it's really red in the areas where there isn't much activity and then the values here where they're is a steady state it's blue and we kind of want to flip those so I'm just gonna search for HSL for heat map heat map color is a hundred percent fifty percent and it's one minus value times 240 okay let's copy that Thank you, Stack Overflow. Actually, I probably shouldn't thank them too quickly because this might not work. <laughs> we'll have to see. So normalized is our value. And then in here, we will put our H. So now let's take a look at that. And we've broken it. Normali normalized. Normalized. Normalized check it out again and there we go that is what I was hoping for this is kind of cool I like this like ultimately we kind of end up with the same pattern but it looks more interesting doing it like this as a heat map when we first refresh we can see a ton of activity and it's all kind of like jiggling around but then eventually we reach a steady state and we can see that in the black and white simulation, but this kind of looks more impressive to me. It looks more lifelike when you first refresh and you see 
all of the energy just like flailing around and then we eventually reach steady state really quite quite beautiful so i've achieved my end goal here i think there's a ton more stuff that can be done with this sort of idea of visualizing things like the game of life in different ways this is one very simplistic way of visualizing it but there's many other ways so i would be excited if you did one of these and sent it to me on twitter at the proof of stake or in the comments or open an issue on github there's tons of ways to contact me so if you do something cool let me know but if you enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up hit the subscribe button bell notification all of that good stuff but until next time, stay hungry and keep coding.